Hey guys, uh, Chris and I'm here to share with you today. We're going to go ahead and go over a little bit of uh, low back work. Uh, I was thinking about this because I've had Chris and Danielle uh, teaching and then doing the jam and then I have a tendency to take things and refine it uh, even more. So for instance, uh, intro to time massage is kind of the, the low back sequence for the mat and we'll be go going over some of that. but. In reality, the way stuff looks in session can be a little bit different because I change things to fit my body and then also change it to fit what I think is going to work best for clients. So when you're giving and receiving with your partner, feel free to change things. But uh, Kristen was like helping somebody move earlier. Yeah. So your low back was... Oh, it's excited for today. Yeah. I figured, you know, it's a little tight, when, you know? I, when I knew you are moving. Go ahead and uh, just lay down on your back for me. Okay. And then... Um, I start with stuff like this all the time. I, I uh, think about this when I'm when I'm teaching. You don't want the pillow? You mind passing me that the roll? Which one? This one? Yeah, yeah, the roll. And a big part of what I do now is just you know flipping camera angles and like showing people exactly what I do in session and like what that flow is like. But because we're you know starting, it's it's very very common for me to to come in and then just start off just like this because I know that she's been mm -hmm. doing stuff with her low back. I'm essentially hooking behind and posterior to the greater trochanter of her femur right into the, the gluteals. You're gonna hit a little bit of gluteus medius which is on the right side, but because when you look at that left uh, anatomy where it's spinning around, do you see that bony knob on the edge of the femur on either side, just on either side of gluteus maximus? That bony knob is what I'm trying to avoid. Uh, when I press in, I don't want to hit that. My, my foot, I can almost feel it like right next to my foot, mm -hmm. but I'm not like, it didn't feel like I'm digging in bone, right? No, you're right up against it. But like right close to it. Close to it. And you'd have to communicate with the person you're working on. Maybe they couldn't take this much pressure. Maybe you'd have to back off a bit. But I'm really using the ball pad of my foot to be able to reach into that area. And then this time I'm going to reach and kind of scoop a little further back. This is one of the hardest things that I teach and it's because of the positioning involved. This leg is mostly just hanging out, but this leg, it's like I'm scooping and then pressing the ball pad of the foot into the gluteals. Now it looks easy because I've just done it 9 million times and I don't have to think about it anymore. If we, uh, if we go horseback riding, uh, I'm going to fall off. I'm going to bother the horse. I don't know where to put my foot. Don't know where the stirrups are. My adductors aren't used to, you know, holding on or whatever. Um, you'll learn how to do this, but I think it feels awkward in the beginning. And frankly, I almost think it should. You're just not used to using your legs and feet this way to be able to deliver pressure. How's that on your back, by the way? It's good. I do lots of work. Um, using the leg as a handle to be able to reach down into the low back and help people with low back pain. A lot of the structures that we're addressing around the pelvis are having an effect on the rotatores and the lumbar spine by mobilizing the sacrum and being able to have those in a position that allows us to access some of the core issues people are having with back pain. If you're not addressing the additional anatomy and you're not addressing the psoas, you're not addressing the gluteals, the hips, if all you're doing is sticking an elbow in somebody's back, I don't think that's going to be as beneficial uh, for the large number of like low back pain things that we see. Um, I was doing some video editing uh, yesterday and I'd had a little bit of a problem with my low back and I just had some tight muscles along my lumbar spine, which was that perfect moment that I actually needed that elbow to like sit and hang out and cheer a different direction. But for a lot of people, I think they're having different issues with their legs and hip structure that's all wrapped around their lumbar spine. It's causing a problem. Is that funny to you? <laughs> no, I just, you hit a spot there where I was like, Wee! Oh, you were just giving me this look and I was like, what, what's going on? Did I miss something? No, it was just like a brief moment of like intensity that was totally manageable. Yeah. Just made me smile. 
this to me isn't what I consider like an advanced move, but I do think that this is really potent work when you're dealing with somebody having low back pain. This is also making the best use of your legs and feet to be able to take pressure off of your hands, which if you're part of a couple working at home and you know, your partner is a big burly guy or something like that, then it would be easier for you to learn how to do this. And again, you can see it from this angle. The, the greater trochanter is usually somewhere about here. You can usually feel like a, a kind of a bony knob or protuberance. You want to kind of be above and posterior and posterior in this case, meaning down towards the mat. So I, I just know how to put my foot in and sort of scoop up. Doing okay there? I'm smiling because I'm doing such a good or job Or is it just cameras. tender? No, it wasn't anything. I was just like, boom, I got that, that shot. Camera one is where it's at. And if they start to shift, uh, move, um, I don't even worry about that. There's a reason we got, got these big, nice mats. These are uh, easy to clean off and wipe down after session. They're also uh, highly functional. You can fold them up, just set them against a wall or put them in a closet. These are the ones I uh, highly recommend to students because I just think they have the most pushback. They're soft, but they've got enough pushback where when you're doing a compression, you don't feel like the person's just sinking away into the mat. I'm gonna reach a little further back this time. Not too much there? No, it's good. How's that on your back, by the way? Feels great. Good. You have to to my SI joint. Now, on the outside, it looks like I'm just working on the leg. Um, also, I think this is one of those movements that people don't quite understand because if you've never had somebody do it to you, you don't know what it's supposed to feel like. And just adding some around the IT band there. Doing all right there? Yeah, I'm good. Your yoga pants, you're sliding away. It's okay. It's okay. I'm gonna take Kristen's leg, and she thinks I'm stretching her, but I'm really dragging her back to center. How was that? That's so therapeutic. Okay. So, you want more of a twist this way? That's nice. Okay. So. Even though my handle is here and I'm pulling the leg, what I'm really trying to do is lengthen all of those facet joints. And I know Kristen well enough to know that her SI joint is like an ongoing issue. And then Kristen, if I were gonna take this, so I'm gonna add some stretch. What do you think about there? That's nice. Okay. Now, do you want me to go up this way? No. Or do you want me to go a little down? Down. Now, when? When? Right there? Yeah. Okay. Now, if I give you a little bounce right here, how's that? Nice. That little clunk in your ankle, is that comfortable? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. And where do you mainly feel this? Right here, middle of my back. Yeah. Right SI joint. Now, because she likes this pull and that little bit of bounce, I'm standing up. I'm trying to figure out how to do this with a little bit more uh, oomph. So I'm going to come down and see if I can do this. I'm going to see if I can loop around her calf here to get some support. How's that? That's nice. Does this feel like it's not as <laughs> beneficial as what I was doing before? The weight easier on you? Yeah. Oh, it feels great. But I can hold this and then if I hold and then rock from there, how's that? That's great. There we go. Now I'm holding her leg. Is it too much where my knees are hitting you? No. There? Okay. But I'm really trying to work on the lumbar spine. I'm really trying to open up those facet joints on one side. And what if I maintain right there? Good. I'm going to unwind just for a second, just to give that part of her spine a little bit more of a break. Then I'm going to bring her up 
and there's a little bit of a hamstring stretch, but I also want to explore sort of tucking the knees towards the chest to be able to change the position of the sacrum. So I'm going to do this one leg at a time. Like if I bring you up and over, do you want to go lateral or do you want to go more towards the yeah, lateral? A little more lateral? So this way? Now, as far as pressure, if I put you in my, my holster right here, is it more like this? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, do you prefer the rocking, sort of rocking in and out? Yeah. So again, so it, it looks like I'm pressing just on the leg, right? I'm using the leg as a handle to mobilize the lumbar spine. This is where most of the the work is coming from. The hands just make it more intense. Just gives a little bit of pressure into the adductors, a little bit of nuance. Yeah. But most of the pressure is delivered just from body weight. You know, what do you think? Hold right there? Oh, no, don't hold. It's, <laughs> it's too tight. <laughs> you can't handle it. <laughs> so again, all down through the, the lumbar spine, mobilizing the sacrum, right? You're working through there. In addition, when you're going through the, the QL, the psoas, you're mobilizing all those structures that wrap around the pelvis, wrap around the hips. And then when I first brought her leg up, it was more like the hamstrings because the hamstrings were getting a little bit of length when the leg was up. When I come down to right here, it's just giving her enough pressure to open that as she dies. As she dies. Slowly. Now, if I take your leg up and over now, and this one is the one I was kind of building up to. This is very beneficial for people. I'm just making a really big circle with the leg. So I'm gonna give her a, a choice, okay? So I can bring her up, kind of knee to same shoulder, knee to opposite shoulder. Where do you want to go? Knee to same. Ooh, you do a whole twisty thing. There? No, like opposite. Of okay. There. Like. Up and over? Yeah. Okay. Now, if I'm going with the knee up towards this opposite shoulder, what happens if I go a little bit over? Is that more beneficial? Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm having to find out from her what, what works best, right? What I'm going to do is come up, and since I've determined that I can cross her over, I'm trying to make this as easy on my body as possible. So if I bring you up and over, do you need more up or more down? Up. Up to where? Okay. Now, because of my height, my leg is long enough that I can do this. When I, when I bring you down and over, <laughs> how far over do you want to go? Oh, that's good. Okay. Or do you mean to rock in and out? In and out. Sorry, good. Okay. In the Intro to Time Massage Workbook, and this isn't an error, by the way. This is just like how the, the curriculum works out. I show knee to same shoulder, knee to opposite shoulder. Because I thought it was clear. We're just mobilizing the hip to access the lumbar spine. Guess what the students get fixated on? Yeah. Well, but we're like, but like, how close to the shoulder do we go? And like, and I'm like, well, it depends on their hip mobility. And they're like, oh, like they want it standardized. Yeah, it can't be, but everybody's different. But this is a modification of what's in the workbook. Yeah. And it's easier on my body. I'm able to rock in and out repeatedly, and I'm not straining my hands while I do it. How's that? It's nice. Right into there. You want some pressure in here? Sure. You want some pressure in here? Sure. Too much? Nope. Is it helping? Sure. Because now that I've got th this leg over here stacked, I could actually drop this guy in and get some gluteal pressure if I want. How's that? What are we? What are we? Oh, that feels so good. Is it more the rocking on the gluteal or the movement of the leg? Uh, both of it. Both of it. Okay. So, because of our time constraints, and I've only worked on one leg, I'm going to slowly unroll this guy and then traction her. How are we doing on time? You're doing great. It's a perfect time to switch at 717. You're, you started about two minutes after, so you're kind of like right on time. Yeah. So, one leg 
we started with like gluteal on one side, gluteal on the other. You generally want to address both. Some people are going to prefer a little pressure to one side or the other. I'm just going to bring her up over here, just like before. And she can have a little bit of bend in the knee. It really depends on how tight her hamstrings are. I want you to feel free to allow the leg to bend. They're still getting some length. It's just like doing a forward bend in yoga. You don't have to keep your legs straight. You can bend them and just straighten them as much as you comfortably can. So bring you up. And then a little bit over. Is that preferable? Sure. Okay. Feels good this way? Okay. And from here, I'm gonna free up my hands so I can grab hold and give her a twist. And you like the rocking in and out? Yeah. Okay. In my case, just like before, I'm gonna drop down. I'm gonna see if I can get a hold right around my the uh, the calf here and that way I can protect the knee joint how's that mm -hmm. okay it's just letting you rock the camera that's killing it thank you just depends on what I'm doing oh, when, where I'm moving it, man. If it feels better to you to do this from a standing position, do it from a standing position. Right there. Oh, I see what happened. I was wondering where that was over there. There is no one up there right now. Whoop. Then, just like before, I'm gonna let her bend. And is it a little more lateral like this? Because okay. we're generally just bringing her hips through a range of motion. Now I've got a hook in the opposite holster here. Most of the movement comes from hips. How's that? Yeah. Okay. Not too much in the adductors? No. Okay. Eighty percent of the low back pain that I see in clients, I would address with a sequence that looks remarkably similar to this, depending on what they report to me. Talky. Too much? And tight. I need the yoga. <laughs> we gave her some, some lateral rotation, right? Now what happens when I bring her up, over, and across? Because I'm just bringing her hip through a range of motion to find out what she likes. If I go up and over, is it just like the other side? Kind of nice. like in there? Yeah. Okay. So it's like free, free, free. Aww. The Amityville Horror, the Crypt Keeper. Once you sway the door and you feel like where, where it needs to be greased, that's where you're going to hang out, kind of over there. Yeah. So for her, it's not really knee just to opposite shoulder. It's a little further along. So when I bring her up and over, it makes it easy for me to step through and go, listen, right there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now is that too much? Because yeah. this is easy for me to do modifying things to make it fit your body is something you must absolutely do. A little further over. Yeah. And then what do you think back there? Oh, oh. oh. Now, one of the things I did not talk about, press number nine, is herniations and bulges. Somebody has an old herniation, go slow, bring them through a range of motion, see how they respond. They have a fresh herniation, don't twist them, <laughs> yeah. just generally speaking. Go back to uh, camera four, there you go. Generally speaking, am I killing you? Yeah, sorry, I forgot about the cameras because the are you dying? Of my butt. Yeah. Whee. 
What are we? 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 What are we? What are we? Right there? Is it too much? Okay. Then I'm going to slowly unwind her again. And we've mobilized the pelvis. We've accessed all the lumbar spine. But how many times have I touched the low back? No. Exactly. But the client would get work like this. And then I'd, if they had a really bad low back problem, just achy sacrum, you know, I would sometimes stop, like put them down and then go, hey, stand up for me, like walk around and then like find out how they feel. And nine times out of 10, after 30 minutes or an hour of this, they're like, oh my God, it's gone. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's just, it's just some tightness like wrapped around this uh, pelvis area. Do you want to turn on your front for me for a second? Yeah, I'd love to. Because easy to use stuff anybody can use at home to be able to uh, help a loved one who's having problem uh, with their low back. So now we have her prone, which means it's much easier for me to come in and deliver pressure yeah. right into the gluteals. Now in her case, because we work together all the time, this could be super nuanced. I could change this in, in myriad ways. Do you want me to go a little bit higher? A little more lateral? Oh, all of it. All of it, right. okay. So all the stuff around the gluteals is yeah, tight, all around tight. the sacrum. What if I'm on top of the sacrum and like leaning down? Oh, okay. But you kind of prefer the gluteals? I like anything. Anything. She just likes attention. I do like attention. <laughs> She's like, take care of me. So this right leg is just planted. The left leg is just hanging out. It's soft ball pad of foot pressure just to rock this open. To me, in a sense, it almost feels novel or not novel, like a novelty. Like for me to think about what I do and how simple and easy it is to deliver, people are really surprised that I get such profound results for clients from using such simple techniques but it was always trying to make it better for the client and better on my body so it was easier to perform. You dying there, Kristen? No, I'm going to heaven. I guess I'm dead. Oh, that's good. Now, we did one side, I'm gonna go back to the other. She's slowly gonna slide back the other direction as I do this. And same as the other, it's kind of like all along the sacrum, all good yeah. spots. Tight ass. Apparently. All these years of work, still tight ass. <laughs> if I was going to use forearm elbows, I would use forearm and elbows after I had softened these structures using my feet. It's very, very common for me to see uh, people using elbows in people's gluteals when I feel like because they don't use their feet as tools, they don't have access to a broader range of tools. So they go to the tools they have, which are more pointy. Ah, my, 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 my tuchus tightens up just at the thought of somebody leaning in, yeah. giving me pressure know, right? with the elbow. Tracing your body with elbow. Oh. I mean, when you build up to it, like, because like, yeah. I had a problem with my low back and the, the elbow was a perfect tool because it was just the right size to like sink into that groove and allow me to get that stuff worked on. But these muscles are so small. If you're focusing on a very specific one, sure, elbow is great. If we're doing what I think of as like general work to be able to soften uh, tissue, I think that it's completely fine and preferable to use the legs and feet first. Uh, this is much easier on the giver. And then also I think it's easier for the receiver to take this on. If I then decided I wanted to come down and deliver some sort of elbow pressure, it's very easy for me to now come down, you know, take an elbow and then put some pressure mm -hmm. like along the sacrum because it feels like I've softened the area with a bigger, broader tool. And now I can do a little spot like cleanup work. So if I hook right there and shear down, 
or up? Up. Up. Tell me when. Mm, when. Right, okay. Now, more to the midline or uh, more lateral? Uh, midline. More to the midline and still up? Right in there. There we go. The reason I ask those questions is because she's telling me where to put my elbow. It's almost like I'm grabbing, if I use the shirt as an example, I can grab a section of skin and then go, do you like this direction? Or, oh, right, oh. When she tells me that, I know I've gotten to that sweet spot, that, that spot that the massage therapist hits that you're like, oh, please just hang out right there. Now, what about some rocking? Mm. Right there. Oh, that's sharp. Not too sharp? It is sharp. So I'm gonna broaden it just a little bit, a little better? Yeah. There you go. And this, again, I would only use this after I had done that basic work to like get the process started. For lots of people, the lower back work uh, that we showed just from working the gluteals that way is really gonna open this whole area up and allow you to get some really, really great low back pain relief for the 70 to 80% of just generalized uh, low back pain that we see in practice every day. Uh, people who sit in chairs, like how much movement do they get through their hips and pelvis at all? Not much. And I do more of it now these days as well because I'm doing constant video editing. But it really starts to allow the sacrum to snake back and forth and move around so that those facet joints open up and some of the tighter musculature along the lumbar spine starts to let go, unwind, and sort of snake around, uh, I think, the way it's intended when it comes to movement. It's very easy techniques to deliver. Once you get used to using your legs and feet, you don't want to not have these tools available because you're really going to save your hands being able to work on people this way. How are you doing, Kristen? You dead? We mentioned herniations briefly. It's just a matter of safety. Again, old herniations, not that big a deal. People adapt, adjust. Even having a herniation doesn't mean it causes pain unless the herniation is actually pressing on a spinal nerve. That's when it could be really bad. People have to have surgery and things to, to clean that up. Oh. And just coming back around just to soften either side. How you doing? You dead? Yeah. Mostly dead? I could lay here all day. Those sessions are only three hours. Uh, that'd be nice. And just to give her some balance for balance sake. I'll come back over to this side and see about the, the elbow along the sacrum there. And from there, is it leaning down mm -hmm. or up? Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me when. Kind of there. Mm -hmm. And then what do you th up. We think more lateral, more medial. Mm -hmm. Whatever the book said. And then up. Yeah. There you go. If they don't have a preference between left to right, I just kind of go to the center. Right in there. Mm -hmm. What if I give you some, some rock there now? Mm -hmm. Or is it better if it's static? Uh, I like rocking. What about this instead? That's nice. There you go. That's nice. So I could make all sorts of assumptions. And in the end, it's just so much easier when she's like, that's nice. That's what she wants. She's conveying and communicating to me that that is the pressure that she was looking for. Me, I'm just exploring movement and trying to make it as easy on my body as possible. But she tells me, that's it, that's the spot. That's the one I want, right there. And she's dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ready to trade off? No, I think you should just give the whole time. Since oh, she's that's how it works, huh? Yeah. No. yeah. So we'll be back in uh, just a second. You guys can uh, take a bathroom break. We'll give you just a, a brief 
convince your receiver to not a smart. brief transmission what do they call it what are they, a brief inter, intermission that's it oh. a brief intermission that's brief like intermission. It's not a transmission that's too. in a car <laughs> we'll be back in just a second <laughs> 